Well, good morning. Welcome to worship today. And I want to welcome those who are watching online. In our sermon today, we are going to look at love and the four types of love that are in the Bible that God created for us to experience in this world. Now, sometimes we don't experience each type of love, but there's one love that we always need to experience, and that's the love that comes from God. So we're going to look at three types of human love that God gave us to experience, and then the one that he gives to us. So that's where we're headed in today's sermon. Let's go ahead and begin worship on this beautiful morning in Arizona with our first hymn. And may God bless our worship together this morning. of your house and the place where your glory dwells Lord restore the fortunes of your people let all your people rejoice and be glad from generation to generation you are our God your word shall be heard among our children and our children's children let us ever share the joys of Jesus let us spread his grace and love to all nations. Indeed, it is good to be here worshiping the Lord and receiving his gifts for our forgiveness, life, and salvation. Yet we must admit that there have been times when we have taken God for granted. There have been times when we created our own religious, political, and social traditions, and given those human-made traditions more attention than Jesus. Still, our Heavenly Father invites us to come to him and ask for forgiveness. Heavenly Father, we confess that we have not always looked to you for all good. We have created idols for ourselves. We confess our sins of thought, word, and deed. Forgive us, Father, for these weak failures. Renew us and lead us so that we follow you and look to you for all good. For the sake of Jesus, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us pray together. 
Almighty and merciful God, defend your church from all false teaching and error, that your faithful people may confess you to be the only true God and rejoice in your good gifts of life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading is from the 29th chapter of Isaiah. For you, this whole vision is nothing but words sealed in a scroll. And if you give the scroll to someone who can read and say, read this please, they will answer, I can't, it is sealed. Or if you give the scroll to someone who cannot read and say, read this please, they will answer, I don't know how to read. The Lord says, these people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based on merely human rules they have been taught. Therefore, once more I will astound these people with wonder upon wonder, the wisdom of the wise will perish, the intelligence of the intelligent will vanish. Woe to those who go to great depth to hide their plans from the Lord, who do their work in darkness and think, who sees us? Who will know? You turn things upside down as if the potter were thought to be like the clay. Shall what is formed say to the one who formed it, you did not make me? Can the pot say to the potter, you know nothing? In a very short time, will not Lebanon be turned into a fertile field and the fertile field seem like a forest? In that day, the deaf will hear the words of the scroll and out of gloom and darkness, the eyes of the blind will see. Once more the humble will rejoice in the Lord. The needy will rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from the fifth chapter of Ephesians. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church, without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body, just as Christ does the church, for we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the seventh chapter. Glory to 
to, O Lord. The Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus and saw some of his disciples eating food with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the tradition of the elders. When they came in from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And they observe many other traditions, such as the washing of cups, pitchers, and kettles. The Pharisees and teachers of the law asked Jesus, why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders instead of eating their food with defiled hands? He replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites. As it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. And he continued, you have a fine way of setting aside the commands of God in order to deserve your own traditions. For Moses said, honor your father and mother, and anyone who curses their father and mother is to be put to death. But you say that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father and mother is Corbin, that is, devoted to God, then you are no longer to let them do anything for their father and mother. Thus you nullify the word of God by your tradition that you've handed down. And you do many other things like that. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated.
likes me better heads for prayer. The Holy Spirit, we were created to have healthy relationships with one another. We were also created to experience love, most notably the love from you, of grace, mercy, and forgiveness, but also to experience love with our fellow human beings and loving our neighbor as ourselves. Teach us how to have healthy relationships through the four types of love that you describe in the Bible. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So on New Year's Eve this year, I know we're all going to be wanting to know another year like 2020 or 2021, but there will be some people among us who will go deeper than that. They'll look at their lives and they'll see that they're lacking relationships healthy. They're lacking that special someone that perhaps they might spend the rest of their life with. They want to have more friends or they want to have better relationships with their family. In fact, when the United States Census Bureau does study the New York relationships, they actually do that. This is one of the top resolutions every single year. It's a need that we have, and because it always pops up on the New Year's resolutions list, it's obviously a need that's not being met. But probably no surprise to you, God talks about how to have healthy relationships in the Bible, and he describes it through the four types of love. Now, 1 John 4.16 talks about love and where it comes from. Let's read this out loud. So we have come to know and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. So we know that God shows us love through Jesus Christ. He does it by actions, not by Through faith in him, we're forgiven of our sins because of his death on the cross. We have new life because of the resurrection. We have an eternal life in heaven. That's God. That's love. That's one of his attributes. God is love. But there's a role that we play, and that's to abide in his love so that he also abides in us. If you understand the four types of love, you can understand how to abide in that love in a way that's pleasing to him and healthy for you. Now, human beings have two basic needs, and they both stem from a command that Jesus gives us. Jesus told us he could summarize the whole law into two commands, loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then the second command is this, a new command I give you, says 1 John 13, 30. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. That's not just a command, it's also identifying a need that he created within us. That need is twofold. First, all of us have an intense desire to be loved, to have someone else care about us, to have someone else identify things that they can do for us, to help us out along life's way. It's the way we are created. When they've done horrible psychological experiments of withholding affection, from children, they don't do these anymore. They find that children get very disturbed by it and they don't live happy and productive lives. It's something that's so necessary for us to experience love. And the flip side is this. We also need to love and care for others. Love has a component where we have to reach out, where we find satisfaction, where we find happiness in helping someone else. So we need to experience love, and we need to give love. And the key to meeting both of those needs is to understand the types of love in the Bible. Now let's take a look at those at a 10,000 foot view. First type of love is eros, or romantic love. That's probably going to be the simplest one for us to understand today. Second one is storge, or family love. In italics are the Greek words in the Bible. So this is the love that we have for one another as family members. Third is philia, which is brotherly love. This stems from friendships, especially those close friendships. And then the fourth one is agape, God's divine love for It can only come from God. God's the generator of that type of love. Let's get started with the most obvious one starting off, eros. Eros is romantic love. It's those feelings that we have. 
when Americans think about love, they always think about Eros. And they believe that if they have Eros in their life, they're going to be happy. Unfortunately, they take three quarters of what God teaches about love and throw it right out the door. Human beings will never be happy on Eros alone. If you've ever known someone who says, I it will be happy, I'll be satisfied when I find that one person, what's going to happen is they're going to put all their happiness on that one person, and that person can't fulfill it, and they're going to be in for a big heartbreak. Eros covers sensual or romantic love, sexual desire, physical attraction, physical love. Love in the form of Eros does have a component that's selfish. We think about love as being not that sexual desire is part of Eros and seeking satisfaction for yourself. And God created Eros. You can't say that it's bad because that's part of who we are, who God made us to be. But he is clear that it's reserved for marriage. God says this just to prove how delightful Eros is in his mind when it's practiced in marriage. Proverbs 5, 18 through 19. Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice in the wife of your youth, a lovely deer, a graceful doe. Let her breast you at all times with delight. Be intoxicated always in her love. Song of Songs is God's love letter. It's showing what marriage can be when Eros is in the right context. Second one is Storge. Now, Storge is the love that we have as family members. Those of you that have had newborn children in your family know that instant bond that you have. You know that you would do anything for your children. You do things for your children that you would never do for someone else. That God-given love, storge, is an aspect of love that God wants us to experience. It's that intimate bond that develops between parents and children and brothers and sisters. Ideally, every child will be raised with storge love child would be happy and well adjusted. In the Bible we see Abraham's love for Isaac as an example of this. Mary and Martha's love for their brother Lazarus wanting him healed by Jesus. And then Eunice and Lois. Eunice with Timothy's mother. Lois was his grandmother. They demonstrated story gay love especially by raising Timothy in the Christian faith. I find it interesting, and this is just kind of like a sidetrack for a moment, that in the Bible, two types of love are actually combined in a verse, Romans 12, 10. In the verse exhorting us to be devoted to one another as Christians in the church, God combines a family type of love with a love that we're going to look at next, which is friendship love. And he combines those two words in a filial storius which commands Christians to be devoted with brotherly love. Interesting, that's one time where those two are combined. So what does that mean, that two combination here? It means that you not only have a nuclear family, your physical family, but when we gather in church, we're God's family as well. We're going to look at that a little bit deeper in just a moment. Third type is philia. So obviously where we get the word Philadelphia for a city in the United States. It's the friendship type of love that we experience. Defined in Greek, the original language of the New Testament, philia is beloved, dear friend. Someone who's dearly loved or prized. A trusted, confident, held in close bond. If you've ever had a friend who's your best friend, who stuck with you through thick and thin, you know what philia can be in its best. It's those people who care about you, who are non-nuclear family members, but they're nonetheless someone that you can trust and believe in. It's a powerful emotional bond. And when people don't have storge in their lives, this can oftentimes be a wonderful way to fill those needs in their life. It's also the most general type of love in the Bible, the one that's spoken of the most. And it's also how believers are to be identified. Are we as a church, the family of God, close with one another? Do we trust one another? Are we each other's confident? Here's a verse that describes that. Let's read this out loud. 
Jesus said, by this all people will know that you're my disciples if you love one another. What type of love is Jesus describing here? Well, the word love right here is philia. That we are to be close with one another, each other's confident, relying on one another, and that relationship as the family of God will show the world that we follow Jesus. And the last one is agape. This is the highest form of love in the Bible, and it can only come from God. It's generated by him. It's this immeasurable, incomparable love for us. It's perfect, unconditional. It's sacrificial love, and it's pure. That's why the Bible says God is love. God is agape. He is the love that we aspire to, but because of our sinful nature, we cannot attain. But God gives it to us, and when he gives it to us, that's what drove him to the cross, his son, and why our sins are forgiven. It's perfect love. And Jesus demonstrates this love on the cross, also by how he lived a perfect life for us, and in his relationship with his Father. Now, in John 21, 15 through 19, I thought I'd share this with you today. You see two types of love at work. You'll see Jesus talking about one type of love, and Peter talking about another. Let's read this. I'll read it for you. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, and this is after the resurrection, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? The love that Jesus uses in this passage is agape. Remember, it can only come from God. Peter said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Peter uses philia, that brotherly love that Jesus wants Christians to be known by. So you see the tension that's being set up? Jesus has pure love, and Peter knows he can't attain it. Peter's using philia that brotherly love that Christians have for one another. And then Jesus said, feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Agape again. He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And Peter was grieved. Why do you think Peter was grieved? Well, Jesus has said three times, do you love me with agape love? Peter knows he can't do that. Peter only responds by love. It seems like Jesus is being kind of cruel to him, but hang on a second. Peter was grieved because he said to him a third time, do you love me? That's with agape love. And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. You know that I love you with phileo love. The love that you require Christians to have, the only type of love I can give you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. What was Jesus showing him? Jesus was showing him that only he could have that divine love. And if Peter just loved him with phileo love, loved other Christians, he would have the capacity to feed others with God's love, that agape love. So let's put this in practical terms. What if your life, you feel like you're missing something with healthy relationships? I'm going to propose to you this morning that it could be a love issue. Let's take a look at this. How about Eros? Let's say that you're lonely and you'd like a relationship in your life. You know what I find interesting? Is that whenever somebody at Epiphany has a surgery or requires hospitalization or gets a diagnosis that's pretty serious, we ask for others to pray for us. And I think we also pray for ourselves as well about them. But when it comes to relationships in our life, I see more Christians feel like God is here or say, I'm interested in that, or I don't think he can help me. So if you're missing arrows in your life, pray to God to fulfill that need. How about if you're missing storge? That's that family you have siblings that are still alive, but you're not necessarily close. Armed with the gospel of Jesus Christ, there's nothing wrong with reaching out and mending a strained relationship. God wants you to experience story day love. I realize there are special circumstances that would preclude that, but for normal human interactions that are just sinful, that have misunderstandings, 
Storge love is important. Maybe that's what you're missing in your life. How about philia type of love? That's common, and especially when we're so tuned in online. We don't have those friendships that are deep, someone else that cares about us. The best way to get friendships is by reaching out and helping others. You're fulfilling that need that you have for love to reach out to others, and you're also working on something together. So if you're missing friendships, look for group activities that reach out to others. And finally, agape. This is something that all of us need regardless of where we are with the other loves. How do we get agape love? Well, you're doing it right now. When you go to church week after week, sometimes a sermon hits you, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes the Bible readings are favorites and they make sense. Sometimes you wonder why they were even chosen. Sometimes it seems like we're doing things by rote. But what you're doing is just like when you exercise, just like when you get physical checkups, just like when you eat healthy food, not junk food, you're strengthening your body, in this case, your faith. And you're keeping that pipeline open to receiving agape love. So God wants us to experience love, agape for sure, is love and forgiveness through Jesus Christ. And to experience the other types of love that he's created for us in this world. Let's go ahead and close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you created love as one of the things that you made in the days of creation between one and six. For us to be able to experience close bonds with other human beings, the bond of marriage, the bond between parents and children and brothers and sisters, and the bond between friends. We thank you that we all have a family, regardless of our earthly nuclear families, and that is the family of God in the Christian church. Help us to always practice filial love, to develop deeper relationships with our fellow members as though they were our family members. And most of all, if we are lacking in some area of our life in love, or we're still challenged on how to reach out to others and help others, and experience love in our own lives from other human beings. Let us always stay connected to you and experience the love that transforms us, the love that can only come from you, the agape love. We ask for these blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I invite you to stand and let's profess our Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, ascended into heaven, and this at the right hand of God. Judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers today, we're going to be remembering the family of Wild Bill Noble, who passed away on Friday and now joins his wife Grace in heaven. We're also going to pray for a friend of mine, Dr. Bagwell. She uh, has had a life that has a number of tragedies. Those of you that are on the prayer chain have been able to read it. She has a vibrant Christian faith. Unfortunately, she has a terminal disease and is hospitalized this weekend, so we're going to remember her in our prayers. Let us pray. Help hear us, Father, when we pray for needed help day by day. Heavenly Father, give us courage to speak to those family members and friends who have ceased to follow you or who have never followed you. Strengthen us for hard conversations so that we pass on the most important thing we have ever been given, Jesus Christ. Hear us, Father, when we pray for needed help from day to day. 
Heavenly Father, you sent your Spirit and your Son to be our comfort in times of mourning and grief. Bring comfort to all those who are suffering at the death of loved ones. We especially remember the family of Wild Bill. Point them to the hope of the resurrection and eternal life. Hear us, Father, when we pray for needed help from day to day. Heavenly Father, remember all those who struggle with infertility. Comfort them in their mourning. Protect them from foolish commentary and judgment. Lead them where you would want them to go. Hear us, Father, when we pray for needed help from day to day. Heavenly Father, we pray for all families, for husbands and wives, for children and grandchildren, for brothers and sisters in every relationship. Help our earthly families to reflect the love, honor, and sacrifice of our eternal family to come. Hear us, Father, when we pray for needed help from day to day. Heavenly Father, look with favor upon all who are sick, injured, and recovering. We especially remember Dr. Bagwell and pray that you would heal her from the fluid that's in her chest cavity that's making breathing difficult. We ask that your good and gracious will be done in her life. Have mercy on them and heal all people according to your good and gracious will. Hear us, Father, when we pray for needed help from day to day. Heavenly Father, we commend all these prayers to you into your loving hands, for you live and reign with the Spirit and the Son, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Lord, look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. And you may be seated. <clears throat> 